Hi, wonderful. <laughs> All right, good morning, everyone. You're most welcome to Faith Independent Baptist Church, and we are so glad to see you here. And we are going to start our service by standing up. Let's all stand up. You're most welcome. Thank you for the fellowshipping you have already seen. It's good to have you here at Faith Independent Baptist Church. So let's all stand up as we start our service. And please, if you have your bulletin, uh, our first song this morning is Blessed Assurance. Amen. And let's sing out to the Lord, let's worship the Lord, and let's pour our hearts to worship him. Blessed Assurance. That's our first song that we're going to sing this morning. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fortress of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit, will still His blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is a trust. I in my Savior, I'm happy, I'm blessed, watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. You may remain standing as we come for Standing. Song number two. Song number two. He's still learning. Some of you are still learning, which is fine. So we'll sing it together. Great is the Lord. What does it mean, great? Does it mean just good? Does it mean fine? Somehow, not bad. Like, not bad is not the same as good, right? And good is not the same as fair. And it's not the same as great. Our God is a great God. And so he is worthy to be praised. Let's sing this together great is the lord he is holy and just by his power we trust in his love great is the lord he is faithful amen by his mercy he proves he is love Great are you, Lord, and worthy of glory. Great are you, Lord, and worthy of praise. Great are you, Lord, I lift up my voice. I lift up my voice. Great are you. Great are you, Lord. 
Was it too low? <laughs> I always do that. It's too high. But you, you stayed with me. Good job. Because you're not singing for me. We're not singing to, to impress the person next to us, especially when we don't have anyone next to us. Anyway, we're singing to worship the Lord because he's great and he's worthy of glory and he's worthy of praise. Amen. What a great God we have. And I'm glad you're here to worship him with us this morning. And as we open in prayer, our mission's focus this week is Truth Radio 105.3 in Mbali. And the word is going out. People are being saved. I've heard testimony from them. Uh, there are always challenges with technology and equipment, but by God's grace, he's given wisdom and providing for that. So we thank the Lord for that ministry, and we continue to pray for that partner. We, we uh, partner with them financially by buying Yakov for the studio. Uh, that's how we help them to produce the programs of preaching and other, uh, the, the music and other teaching lessons that go out so that people can hear about Christ and be saved and grow in him. So that's our mission's partner today. So as we open in prayer here, we're praying for our service, praying for the children's church, and also praying for the ministry of Truth Radio. Let's open with prayer. Father, we thank you for your great love. You've proven your love by your mercy and by your grace. And so we've come to worship you in response to your drawing, your call to us, as humanity for whom Christ died. So, Father, I pray for those who could be among us today and have never accepted that gift of salvation. Continue to draw them, to call out to them, to, to give them the light of truth. Remove the blinds that the God of this world has put on them, that they may know of your love, that they may know that they're a sinner and need a savior, which is in Jesus Christ alone. I pray for us who have received that gift, that we would grow in grace and grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we would be transformed and conformed to the image of Jesus. Give us understanding from the scriptures today, we pray, and we ask also for this ministry of Truth Radio in Mbali, knowing that your word is being preached, that the Bible is being taught and that there's music that is bringing glory to your name. May it encourage believers and confront the unbelievers that they would put their faith in Christ and then grow in you. We pray your blessing on that ministry. We pray your blessing on our service here and for that of the children next door. Not so that we can boast or anything of ourselves, but so that we would glory in your cross and that we would bring glory to your name. For it's in the name of Jesus we pray these things. Amen. Thank you. you. may be seated. I'll invite Brother Joseph to come back and lead us in our next song. All right. So our next song is First John chapter 4, verse 7 to 8. And we'll sing this song out to the Lord. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. Beloved, let us love one another. Amen. Let's try that out loud again. Let's sing it one more time. Amen. We should be loving one another. So let's sing it again. All right. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God. And knoweth God, he that loveth not, knoweth not God, God is love, beloved, let us love one another. Amen. How many of you this is your first time to hear this song? 
Wow, quite few. Wow, so I guess we need to keep singing it so that we learn it. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, so our next song is Jesus, Thank You. That will be our next song, Jesus, Thank You. What a wonderful song. When we're singing this song, I'll request you to please think about the words. Uh, Don't just sing it, but sing it from your heart and echo the words and understand the words that we're singing about. Jesus, thank you. Oh, I was forgetting the part. So we were doing something special in this song, uh, the chorus. So the first line will be for, for women. So you know, the first line will be for women. Then we shall sing, Jesus, thank you, all together. Then men, the Father's wrath completely satisfied. Jesus, thank you, will be all of us. Then once your enemy. Is that men, right? The men, all right? Then ladies who sing, now seated at your table. Then lastly, Jesus, thank you. I think that's up in the screens. So you can follow up the bold red. So don't follow the, the white words so you'll get lost. All right. The mystery of the cross I cannot comprehend. The agonies of Calvary. You, the perfect Holy One, and Christ, your Son, who drank the bitter cup for me, women alone. You. Together, Jesus, thank you. Father's wrath completely satisfied. Jesus, thank you. What's your enemy? Just thank you. Amen. How many of you love that? You're doing good. That's amen. <laughs> All right. We still have one more verse, so we'll get good at that. Amen. All right. By your perfect sacrifice I've been brought near. Your enemy, you've made your friend. Pouring out the riches of your glorious grace. Amen. Your mercy and your kindness know no end. Your blood has washed away my sin. Jesus, thank you. The Father's wrath completely satisfied. Jesus, thank you. Once your enemy. Jesus, thank you. Amen. Good job on that. Thank you for that wonderful sing. Let me welcome Pastor Dan. Some people are even lost. They don't even know where to fall. <laughs> thank you. Today, if you are a soprano, you're in, you're in a good place. If you are the alto, the basses, we're struggling. It's high. The notes were high, but uh, it's good songs and good important messages. Our announcements this morning as we, as we think of events that are coming up here at Faith Baptist Church right now, we're in our February Bible studies dealing with guilt in this room. Uh, how do we respond to those guilty feelings and what does the Bible say about them? Then in the other room, Christ's second coming. So two great classes. I'm thankful for those that are teaching. Looking ahead to next month, we're going to have Uh, separate sessions, men and ladies, but doing the same class. Uh, One week will be separate, the next week together, and then the third week separate, and the fourth week together. And that will be on, I just forgot it, uh, Victory Over Sin and Shame next month. So great class at 9.30 every Sunday morning. Then uh, on Tuesdays at 5.30, we have our Decisions series. And it's been a great help to me, and I know it's a help to those that are able to learn these principles and we're, this is not a repeat of what we did last year. It's building on that. We had the five resources or tools last year. And now we're going through the five steps. We're on the second part of step number two this week. 
So if you've missed out, you can still come and get caught up, and I know it will be a help to you. That's Tuesday at 5.30. Discipleship groups, we have lessons available today. Please see one of the ushers or one of the pastors after the service. We'd love to help you get started or continue in those discipleship classes. There's no charge for them, so I hope you'll be able to participate. Married couples. Married couples, we have a formal dinner at Sky's Hotel this Saturday evening. Uh, it, it, it could be free for the ladies if the husbands pay. <laughs> it's the best I can do, all right? Uh, if you have questions about it, please uh, contact uh, you can contact me. Uh, maybe if Orishab and Jimmy are here, they're the ones coordinating it. Um, if you need more information, let us know. We'll send you a WhatsApp of the menu. But this is 5.30 at Sky's Hotel. Couples, it's a formal dinner. And I've been informed that Clarissa Kawumi is the bouncer. Is the, not the bouncer, but the dress code. I don't know. Anyway. It's a formal dinner. I think the dress code is as if you're attending a wedding reception. Those are the guidelines we had. So, I don't know, do I need to get my kanzu? Anyway, <laughs> huh. don't worry, it won't be there. All right, so that's Saturday, Saturday at 5.30. Uh, coming up next Sunday, the last Sunday of the month, we'll be watching our chosen video after the service, starting uh, season three, episode one and uh, if technology works, we'll be watching that and discussing the, the parts of scripture that they're illustrating. It's a, an opportunity for us to look back and consider scripture maybe from a view that we didn't have because is anyone, was anyone here alive at that time, 2000? We weren't. So understanding how they thought and lived helps us to understand the scripture better. And these videos help us with that. Also, next Sunday is our building fund offering. I'll ask Clarissa to come for her announcement. Uh, but also remember, every last Sunday, we encourage people to give an extra offering towards the building fund and their envelopes. If you're not able to be here on that Sunday, you can give any time. But we're also doing the opportunity of getting shirts. So I'll let Clarissa announce this. Good morning. Good morning. How are you all? I've come with that announcement of every church we are building. But ours is really, really cool because we have nice t-shirts. I'm sure some of you have seen them, very beautiful designs. And we also have t-shirts for children. Over, I think there are eight colors for children. And then also about seven colors for the polos. And then the vinic has four colors for the adults. Um, we can pick your design from here. We're taking orders from today, all through the week, till next Sunday, so that we can, some people have ordered already. We want to take advantage of um, the economies of scale or bulk ordering. So if you want a shirt, this is the time. The deposit is 20,000. The price for the V neck is 35,000. The price for the polo neck is 45. The polo neck usually has the Faith Baptist sign, um, our logo embroidered on it. But you can also get these other, other designs in the polo in the corner, like a square on the corner. Yeah, we can do that for you. Is anyone excited about a t shirt? Yeah. Yes. So, how many per ordering today? Uh, what words can I use? You, you give me the marking guide. <laughs> okay, but you said you're going to order. At least, please, you can let me know. Pastor Dan, um, Michael is around, Becky, those are, yes, David as well is around, Mr. Deke. So, um, those are the guys of the building committee. You can order with us. Give us your, your deposit, and then we put in your orders. Next Sunday is the last day. Next Sunday is also the collection Sunday for building fund, for the, for the building. So if you have money there, God is putting it on your hand to bring like 3 million, 500 shillings, 20,000. We accept all forms of payment, draft, cash, visa, your whole ATM. We take it. Please. We are glad. Uh, yes, sir. If you have one t-shirt, you can order four more. Because we have one, two, three, four designs. 
So you can have the same design. If you have this one, we have it in black, red, maroon, gray, orange. So if you have it in maroon, you can get it in red, maroon, gray, orange. Then you move on to the heart. <laughs> yes. Then you get it in black, red, maroon, gray. All right. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy service. Just one point of clarification. She said we accept all forms of payment. If you are giving Visa, include the PIN number. <laughs> we'll give you the card back when we're done. Is it fine? Okay. Right. Uh, tithes and offerings, thank you for your faithfulness. The box is by the door. Um, I, I love that we can just give from our hearts and not for show. And uh, I, I'm, I, I'm thankful for your heart of giving. And uh, one thing we just want to remember is our, our mission giving. It's been a little bit down some weeks, but by the end of the month, it always catches up. So thank you for faithfulness to that. Our mission partners depend on that for the work God has called them to do. Is anyone visiting today for the first time? I see some people that it's the first time this year. But anyway, we're glad you're back. Others, first, anyone for the first time, first, first time? I don't see any first timers, but... Uh, if you are, and maybe you're in the other room and I've not seen you, after the service we do have a, 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 a team that would like to welcome you and give you a gift, so please see the usher about that. Uh, but otherwise, let's stand and greet one another, greet those that have been gone, those that are back, those that were sick and are now healed, and thank God for bringing us together today. Let's stand and greet one another. Wonderful. Thank you for the greeting one another and welcoming one another. And I'll, I know we have sat a little bit, so let's stand up again. Let's all stand. Let's all stand for our next song, Grace Alone. Grace Alone. That will be our next song, Grace Alone. 
Every promise we can make, every prayer and step of faith, every difference we will make is only by His grace. Every mountain we will climb, every ray of hope we shine, every blessing left behind is only by His grace. Grace alone which God supplies, strength alone He will provide. Christ in us, our cornerstone, we will go forth in grace alone. Every soul we long to read, every heart we hope to teach, everywhere we share is peace, is only by His grace. Every loving word we say, every tear we wipe away, every sorrow time to praise is only by His grace. Grace alone, which God supplies, strength alone, He will provide. Christ in us, our cornerstone, we will go for the grace. Let's repeat the chorus again. Grace alone, which God supplies, strength alone, He will provide. Christ in us, our cornerstone, we will go forth in grace alone. Amen. Wonderful singing. Yes. So let me welcome Pastor Dan for the scripture reading. All right. Thank you, Brother Joseph. I'll ask you to take your Bibles and open to Matthew chapter 5. If you'd like to borrow a Bible this morning, if you'll raise your hand, we'll loan one to you for the service. We'd love for you to follow along. Who needs to borrow one today? Could you help them? Thank you. Just raise your hand. We'll bring that to you. Matthew chapter 5. We'll read three verses this morning from verse 43, Matthew chapter 5, verse 43, up to verse 45. These are hard verses. Let's, let me read the first, you read the second, and I will read the third. I'm not going to read the second out loud, so you have to make up for the volume, okay? So I'll read 43, all of you read 44. And then I'll read verse 45. Let's follow along together in Matthew chapter 5. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemies. 44. Good. Verse 45, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. May God 
bless the reading of his word. Let's remain standing as we come to our song of the month, and I'll invite Brother Beard to come back and uh, lead us in that song, please. Amen. Wonderful. As we sing our last song, we all gathered here to hear from the Lord. Amen. Amen. And so let's sing this last song with all our joy in our hearts, and let's sing out to the Lord. Speak, O oh Lord, as we come to you to receive the food of your holy word. Take your truth planted deep in us, shape and fashion us in your likeness that the light of Christ might be seen today in our hearts of love and our deeds of faith speak O oh Lord and fulfill in us all your purposes for your glory. Teach us, Lord, full obedience, holy reverence, true humility. Test our thoughts and our attitudes in the radiance of your purity. Cause our face to rise, cause our eyes to see your majestic love and authority. Words of power that can never fail. Let the truth prevail over unbelief. Speak alone and renew our minds. Help us grasp the highs of your plans for us truth and chain from the dawn of time that we lay down through eternity and by grace we'll stand on your promises and by faith we'll walk as you walk with us. Speak all on till your church is built and the earth is filled with your glory. Amen. Wonderful singing. Let me welcome Pastor Dan for the word of God. You may be seated. Thank you, Brother Joseph. Thank you all for that good singing this morning. So much truth in these songs, and it's, it's good to meditate and to think about these things as we prepare our hearts. Not what we sang, prepare us. Speak, O Lord, as we come to you to receive the food of your holy word. And that is what we are turning to now in Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, and we'll be studying still in, in uh, some of the same verses we just read, starting from verse 33 up through verse 48. If you have the book, uh, our book that we're going through um, at hand, we're on page 25 today, so if you have your book, you can turn there and, and take notes there. Also, there's space on the back of your bulletin. Uh, I have one, two, is there another one here? I have two books left for this session, these, these passages, Matthew uh, 1 through Matthew 7, verse 29. Is there anybody that doesn't have a book and you still need a book? Anybody that does not have one? One there? All right. One here. Oh, 
It's my last books. Now there are three. I'm going to have to give the first two hands here and here. Maybe you can auction it. I don't know. what. <laughs> we'll take bids for it. No. Uh, but still, you can follow along on the back of your bulletin if you don't have your book. We'll get new books for the next group. That'll be the end of March, a month from now. We'll finish this book, and then we'll go on uh, this booklet, and then we'll go on to Matthew 8 um, with a new book on the miracles and parables of Jesus. I'm looking forward to that study as well. Uh, so here in our, in our study today in Matthew chapter 5, uh, we're continuing really where we started last week, that love is greater, and we need a greater love. Love motivates us to do things greater or in a greater way. In fact, this passage we'll study today ends with Jesus telling us to be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. That's the greatest love, is God's love, and that's what we want. Um, I, I read about an advert that was placed in a newspaper back in 1962. It was not in Uganda, it was in May 1962. And a woman placed an advert in her local newspaper promising that she would, uh, well, explaining that her husband had been convicted of a crime he didn't commit, and she couldn't bear to see her husband die for something he didn't do. So she offered to work for 10 years as a cook, a maid, a housekeeper, whatever was needed for a leading attorney who would take his case and get her husband free. One of the attorneys saw the advert and had compassion on this woman and, and the, the situation, went and discussed with the gentleman, looked at the case, and went back to the judge, and it was proven that the man was innocent, and he was released. And so after, after that, the lawyer went to the, the woman and said, I, I cannot ask you to work the ten years. He said, your love for your husband so moved upon me, I also wanted to, to show love for your husband. And that sacrificial love of the wife spread to others. And we just finished our marriage conference and we talked about how love motivates one spouse to love the other one back. And, and when someone does something good for you, you want to do something good for them. And what we learned in our study this morning is guilt is a terrible motivator. Love and grace are the good motivators. So as we look in this passage today in Matthew chapter 5, we want to, to think about a sacrificial love that motivates others to love. And first and foremost, we have received that love in Jesus Christ. So what we mentioned last week is that love gives us a greater righteousness. Love gives a greater righteousness than what just works can do. If we're, if we're just doing things outwardly, we will obey as long as we're being watched. Right? What happens at the workplace when the director is in the office? Everyone's... Yes, oh yes, yes we can do that for you. We'll get that out right away. You know, everyone's busy and then he leaves It's like... <laughs> oh, yes. Isn't that right? Because they're not motivated by love, they're motivated by fear, really. But if there's love, if you love your company, you're going to work hard because you want the company to succeed, right? If you love your family, you'll work hard for your family for the benefit of the family. So love gives their righteousness, it's righteousness from the heart not just an outward. So Jesus takes the outward commands of the law and He expands them. He doesn't cancel them. He doesn't cancel the outward commands, but He expands them and says it's not just what people see outside. God's looking on what's inside. And so we need to govern our hearts and our attitudes. Love results in a greater obedience as well. We talked about anger and we talked about last week. And if you weren't here last week, you can go to YouTube, faith.ug slash YouTube. Our services each Sunday we post online and so you can get caught up. But 
We dealt with anger and lust, and we're going to continue with some of those topics today here in Matthew chapter 5. We, we saw that righteousness is the result of being righteous, not the other way around. See, I don't become righteous by doing righteousness. Because God has made me righteous, now I have the ability to do righteousness. We cannot produce what we don't have. Um, there's the old question, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Because eggs produce chickens, and chickens produce because the egg is just a, a chicken. The other day I was buying eggs in the market here, and you know how market vendors all, they all want you to be their customer, right? Hey, support me. Why are you not buying my things? Right? So I bought the eggs. I had them in the and I was walking past the chickens. He's like, eh, you also buy chicken. I said, I have my chickens here. They're baby chickens. <laughs> he wasn't happy with me. But anyway, chickens and eggs, they produce this because they're the same. It's what they produce. I cannot produce righteousness unless I am righteous. But there's not righteous, no, not one, without Jesus Christ, the righteous judge, living in us to produce righteousness. So righteousness is the result of being righteous. Religion tells us, do this, do this, do this, do this. But that's not what Jesus is teaching us here in Matthew 5. He says, be. Because it comes down to what we are, not what we do. Who I am makes me acceptable to God. Because of who I am, it should change what I do. But what I do cannot change who I am. Because I am God's child, I should live like His child. Religion says, do, 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 do. But as we saw last week, we are human beings, not human doings. Why is it that we can be human? Because that's what God has created us to be. Do we agree? Was anyone here created to be a lion, like Brian so eloquently demonstrated for us last week? Was anyone here created to be a lion? We were created to be a human. We were created to be holy in Jesus Christ. Our new creature, right? to be righteous, to be salt, to be light. How can we do that? Because it's what we are. We are human beings, not human doings. So what we are produces love. Because I am a child of God, because I am righteous, because I am holy, because I have the God who is love living inside of me, it produces love. So love is the motivation for what we, we do. So with that in mind, we look to our passage today, 33. It says, You've heard that it's been said by them of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. So there was a, a commandment here, and, and our section here, we're thinking about love with greater promises. The promises that we make should be greater out of love than they are out of duty. So love is a greater promise. And in verse 33, Jesus is saying, you've been, you've been told, there's the command that says, don't forsway yourself, but whatever you promise to God, make sure you do what you promise. Now that's not a bad principle. We should do what we promise to God. Do we agree? I remember when I was growing up, um, and maybe it's still done today, but people would make promises, and it was, it was a childish thing, but you would, you would say, yes, I'll, I'll, do, I'll, I'll do this, I'll give you this, I'll do whatever, but then you say, but I have fingers crossed. Did you do that here in Africa? Oh, you, you were doing it now? You're still doing it? Okay. She's like, yes, we do it. Hmm. So confession for the soul. Anyway, uh, did this change the promise? No. My, my promise was still there. And sometimes 
Sadly, I think we pray to God as if our spiritual fingers are crossed. God, if you'll do this for me, I promise I will. And then we don't. Does that happen? We make promises. So, if you promise to God, do what you promise to God. That's not a bad law. It's not a bad principle. But remember, Jesus wants to take the outward and turn it inward and take it deeper for us. Um, we should still do what we promise to God. For example, our faith promise. God, I, I promise to give by faith this amount that you put on my heart to promise to give for missions. And I'm going to give that every month for our missions program. We should keep that promise. But Jesus is taking it further and saying it's not just what you promise to God. If I promise Noah something, is he God? Oh, so I don't have to do that. And Jesus says, no. Crossing your fingers or finding some loophole. How many of you like loopholes? I don't see any hands. Loopholes are kind of fun sometimes. You know, you're told, oh, you can't do this. Okay, I can't do that, but they didn't say I can't do this. And we get creative, right? So now I don't have to... I guess no one here is an attorney. Attorneys love loopholes, don't they? Oh, yes, we signed a 30... 332-page contract, but the contract never said this. It only said that. So now we don't have to do... Right? I know those in marketing love the legal department. Uh, They always find these, no, you can't do it because of this. And There there are all these things, these conditions that we want to place on our obedience, but Jesus is saying, generally, don't make promises you can't keep. He says, I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king, neither shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. A lot of times we promise things that are beyond our control. We want to leave, our children are crying, no, 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 I'm, Daddy, I promise I'm coming back. Can I guarantee I'm coming back? Is that a promise I can be sure to keep? Mm -mm. I promise my hair will not turn gray. (laughs) Maybe you go and you you go through a lot of kiwi. I don't know. But it doesn't change the fact the hair is gray. We've just covered it, right? So there are things that we promise that really we have no business promising. Because I can't keep that promise. So Jesus is saying first, yes, you should keep your promises to God. But even with each other, don't make promises that you don't have the power to keep. Each one of those that are serving in the different areas, I usually send out a text on Friday and ask if you'll be able to come. I understand, and you understand what I mean, is your intention, are you planning to be here? But you can plan very well to be here and not make it, right? Um... Do boaters ever run out of fuel? (laughs) Do taxis get flat tires? Do keys get misplaced? Do all these things, do children vomit on your Sunday dress as you're walking out the door? It happens. I understand. And so when I'm asking, will you be able, I'm I'm not asking for a promise, I will be there, because I know you can't control that. But sometimes we make promises that we shouldn't make because we can't keep it. And Jesus summarizes in verse 37, let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay. For whatever is more than these cometh of evil. Well, I said yes, but I didn't say absolutely yes. You know, we we have these terms and conditions. And Jesus said, if yes doesn't mean yes, and no doesn't mean no, anything else comes from evil. So we just need to be honest and our word should be a promise. If I say it, that should be my my promise. I plan to be there. I can promise to plan to be there, right? Which means I'm going to put aside other things and prioritize this thing which I promised. Should I plan to be in church? Yes. Should I plan to, to provide for my family? Yes. I need to make those priorities and put aside other things to do those right things. So we need to love with greater 
promises, thinking about what we promise, making sure it's not a promise we can't keep, and then make sure I keep my promises. Not just to God. But if I say yes, it means yes. If I say no, then no. Secondly, we should love with greater patience. Oh, isn't that a wonderful word? Patience. We want other people to be patient with us. But being patient myself, now that's a, that's a little different thing, isn't it? Patience. Jesus says in verse 38, you've heard, you've heard that it hath been said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you that resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if a man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain or two. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. Love with greater patience. The law, Leviticus 24, is where this comes from, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. And it is, uh, the law says, respond with equal measure. If somebody, if somebody you know, is fighting you and they break your tooth, then you remove their tooth. If they damage your eye, then you damage their eye. You know, it's interesting, those that say, you know, if you do this to me, I'm going to do this to you. Okay, so if I give you a gift, you're giving me a gift? We don't normally... An eye for an eye, a tooth for tooth. Love for love, gift for gift. If, how, how many of us have received something and we didn't give something back? Probably most of us. If this principle is A for an A, B for a B, C for a C. Then we've all failed. Because can we give God life? <laughs> no. We can surrender our lives to Him. But He has given us more than anything else that anyone has taken from us, right? And by the way, who gave us the eye that we have? What, so did you give Him your eye? Who gave you your tooth? So did you give it back? You see, everything we have is a gift. And when we realize, God, all that I have is yours, here's what happens. If you get annoyed with me and you damage my eye, if I realize that I belong to Christ, whose eye did you damage? If my eyes belong to Him, then they're His eyes. Whose tooth? So who will deal with them? And who can deal better with somebody, me or God? See, when I know who I am in Christ, that I belong to Him, when, it's when I take that control. No, this is my body. This is my life. This is... You're going to do that to me? That's where I get problems. So the law said, respond in equal measure. But Jesus teaches to respond. Verse 39, He says, if they smite thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. The law actually said, if somebody... It actually had different rules. If it's an open hand, if it's a fist, or if it's the back of their hand, there were different fines. You could go to, to the council and say, this person, they hit me on the, on the face or the neck with the fist, or with the back of the hand, or with the front of the hand, and there was a fine you could collect from them. And Jesus says, if they smite you on the cheek, turn to him the other. Were these just words for Jesus? No, in Matthew chapter 27, he's standing before the high priest. And when they ask him, are you the Christ? And he says, yes. It says, they all began to smite him on the cheek. That's not just one. What did Jesus do? If it had been James and John, what would have happened? Fire out of heaven. <laughs> what did Jesus do? He turned the other cheek. Because there was a greater purpose, right? He was showing the love. Love has greater patience than just the law. Well, as long as you're good to me, I'll be good to you. If you hurt me, I'll hurt you. No, we're supposed to respond with mercy. They deserve to pay a fine for smiting me on the cheek, but he says, don't enforce the penalty. Respond with grace. If they sue thee at the law and they win, 
and they are able to take your coat and give your cloak also. Okay, you deserve that? Well, I'll give you more than you deserve. Roman law said that a soldier could command any, anyone in the country to carry their, um, their bag for them for one mile. So the mile markers on the road began so they would know how far, know how far to carry the bag. And he says, if you are commanded, demanded to carry a bag, may I borrow your bag? For a mile, whew, I don't know how you do six kilometers. That mile wore me out. No, okay. One mile, he says, go two before you put down the bag. I'll give it back. Don't worry. You thought I was taking it home. Go beyond what's required. Even when it's under oppression, even if it's, you know, it seems unfair, the grace goes beyond because we've received grace, haven't we? And we can express that grace. And he says with generosity, give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow thee. By the way, the Bible doesn't say you have to give them exactly what they asked for. If my children ask for me to buy for them a black mamba, I'm saying no. I will give them maybe advice <laughs> instead of a snake. I will give you something, but not something that's going to hurt you, right? So sometimes, yes, we give to those that ask, but it doesn't always mean we give them exactly what they ask. We want, but still, if somebody's asking for help, we give help. Don't turn them away. And sometimes that means we have to take time to get to know the situation, find what would really help them. So respond with mercy, with grace, and generosity. That's how we love with greater patience. We love with greater promises. And thirdly, this morning, we should love with greater perfection. The last verse of this chapter says, Be ye therefore perfect. He didn't say act perfect. He didn't say do perfect works. He says be perfect. Again, it's what we are. The Pharisees and, and the law had a principle, and Jesus said in verse 30, 43, verse 43, you've heard that it's been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemies. They borrow that from Leviticus 19, verse 8, where we are told to love, but it only says, it, it doesn't talk about loving enemies, it says love those that do good to you. So the Pharisees took that and said, now if we're supposed to love those that do good to us, that gives us the opportunity to hate those that do equal to us. They did math. The Pharisees took this idea and they brought math into the equation. And so their math said, if I love, then I also need to hate. Would we consider love positive and hate negative? Right? So let's do some math. Plus one, minus one. Plus one, minus one. Plus one, minus one. Plus one, minus one. It's balanced, right? What's the total? Zero. How many of you want your life to be zero? That's what the law does. Plus one, minus one. I love my friend, so I hate my neighbor. To show how much I love my friend, so I really hate, my, not my neighbor, my enemy. Love and hate, love and hate. They wanted this balanced idea, but the total is zero. And Jesus says, I say unto you, love not just your neighbor, but love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Jesus said, love everyone, even the neighbors, even the enemies. Don't neglect your neighbors, but also love your enemies. Just like in that patience, he's saying respond with mercy, respond with grace, respond with, with patience, with generosity, even <clears throat> to your enemies. What's our basis for that? Because when we were enemies, Christ loved us. And He showed His love, He commendeth His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. When we deserved hell because of sin, the wages of sin is death, Jesus said, you're my enemy, you're against me, you're, you're doing your own thing. In fact, you're, you're worshiping the devil as you think you're doing your own thing. Because you're turning away from me, but I love you, I'm going to die for you to pay for your sins, to take your guilt from you if you accept my gift. We didn't deserve it, it's by 
His grace. Grace alone, what we sang about today. And so because we've received that grace, because we have the God of all grace living in us, we can love everyone, even our enemies. The source of our strength, the source of that love, is that we are children of the Father. Verse 45, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. Basically he's saying, you are God's child, so act like it. Act like it. Yeah, I remember when I was young, teachers would say, you're acting like a bunch of monkeys. You know, children just crawling all over everything and making noise and climbing and doing all these things. What was the problem with acting like monkeys? Because we're humans, right? So we should act like what we are. If you are the children of your father, be the children of your father. Show. How, how can I be a human? I just do what humans do because that's what I am. How can I be the child of God? He doesn't say become. He's saying because you are children of your father in heaven. He says, he says children of your father, which means he's already my father. The passage here, he's not saying how to become a child of God. He says God is your father, so be what you are. You don't know what these people do to me. Does God know? And He makes the sun to rise on the evil and the just. Right? And He causes the rain. Wouldn't mind if we had some of that today. It's been dry. Lord, you, we've had the sunshine. We wouldn't mind the rain. But when He sends rain, is He just going to send it on Pastor Dan's compound and maybe the Katumba home? And is it is He just saying, okay, I'll put it on these few it rains on the just and the unjust. So where should our love be? It should be for the just and for the unjust. And don't be confused what, what Jesus said back in verse 39. He says, resist not evil. He's not saying don't stand against what's wrong. What He's saying is when people are evil to you, don't just push them away. He's saying respond with that mercy that grace, that love. Why? Because when we were evil against God, what did He do for us? He responded with mercy and grace and generous love. Why? Because He wanted us to come to Him. Do you like it when mean, evil people come to you? We don't. I'll be honest, it's not like I look forward to it. If you see somebody that is harassing someone in the market, do you go up and say, hey, how are you doing? You, I'd like to see that. <laughs> no, we, we avoid it. But Jesus is saying, show my love. Show my love to them. Be, be who you are because you are children of the Father. Verse 46, if you love those that love you, what's the reward? If it's Christmas and you have gifts for everyone in your family and you say, okay, I want to see what you got. Now, I'm not giving this to you if you didn't get something for me. <laughs> Is that love? That's all you got? <laughs> okay, you can have that. Have I loved my daughter? No. If my love is based on how much love I'm getting from you, is it love? It's business, right? This is, it's in marketing, sometimes one business will send appreciation to another business. Uh, I used to work for a company and they would send tea to, it was a car leasing company, and so when customers would bring their cars for repair, they would want that repair shop to refer their customers to our leasing company. So a week we would send tea to the staff of that repair shop. We did it with many. So that they would remember, oh yeah, let me send my customers there. Was that love? <laughs> Strategy. Ooh. It's marketing, right? It's not love. It's, okay, so what if that company never sent us a customer? 
I think we would reallocate the fee. Right? We change the strategy. But God, when we were his enemies, not just neutral, we were his enemies. So loving those who love us, there's no reward. I think I have that on here. But there's a reward when we love. I'll go back and look in verse, still in this chapter, in verse 10. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, hallelujah, and say all manner of evil against you falsely. Praise the Lord, right? I'm not getting much response here. What's wrong, church? Revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely. What's wrong? It's hard. But he said, blessed are you. Rejoice and be exceeding glad. That doesn't just mean, we talked about this earlier, that it's not just fair. Somehow, I'm okay. Exceeding glad. Is that exceeding glad? Hmm. When your team wins Champions League, how are you? Some of you are like, ah, Champions League. Ah. But some of you, you cannot sit down, right? I mean, you're jumping. I, I'm not going to do it. I'll embarrass myself. But anyway, you get excited. You are exceeding glad. That's how we should be when people say things. Why? Because he says, great is your reward in heaven. Several people here work in banking. And, you know, with banking, sometimes you can get SMS alerts, Right? And you get this alert, you have received a deposit for 2,500 shillings. You're like, hmm, money is money, right? But then you get, you've received a deposit of 25 million shillings. <laughs> you know, you don't just look for the notification. You're logging in to online, but you're, you're checking 25 million. <laughs> you are exceeding glad and you want to withdraw before they realize it's a mistake, right? Because... <laughs> There's a great blessing. That is a great reward. Wouldn't it be nice if whenever someone did something against you, you got a text, 20 million. Uh huh. How would our attitude be towards that person? Go ahead, say it again. <laughs> say it again. <laughs> you say it. How would we feel about people saying evil against us? We're like, yeah. We'd be saying... Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. So what's more real? Centenary or heaven? Hello. What's more real? Would you rather have the 20 million in the bank or the rewards for eternity? Now don't answer that. Because you might lie. Just being honest. We get excited over the text message of 20 million, but we don't get excited when we read about blessed are ye when men shall revile you. Church, where are we? Are we together here? What's the first word of that word verse? Blessed. blessed. Is it true? Do we believe the Bible's true? Yeah. Then if I'm blessed, what's my response when somebody reviles me? When they persecute me. Amen. Hallelujah. When they say all manner of evil against me falsely for Christ's sake. Is that our response? Or are we like, all right, do it again. Do it again. Cha-ching. Right? If we really believe what Jesus said, are we burdened by what those people are saying? Or are we rejoicing? We'll rejoice. Because there's a greater perfection than, I can't believe those people said that. Well, especially if they're not saved, we can believe it, because unsaved people do unsaved things. Yeah. Now, we as the church shouldn't be doing that. Let us not be the ones persecuting one another. But if others do it, hey, <laughs> Notification. All it is, when we hear, did you know this person said something about you? <gasps> That's just a notification of a reward. Am I right? Is that what the Bible says? We can rejoice. 
You're like Pastor Dan now. Living in the reality is harder than reading about it. How do we love those that don't love us? See, instead of the Pharisees scale, love and hate, because that's what we want to do. Oh, you said that about me? Well, I'll tell you about that person. Right? That's plus one minus one equals. Instead, what we need to have, we take away the hate, and we just double up on the love. We get heavy on the love side. And that's when we see the rewards. It brings the abundance. It brings the abundance of the rewards. Jesus says, as we read earlier in verse 48, Be therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. That word perfect means complete, mature, perfected. We need to be like Christ, the perfect one. So how do we do that? As we've studied through this chapter 5, we saw the B attitudes. It tells us how to be blessed. My attitude towards persecution will be very different when I see that it's a means of blessing. When I hear about it and I view that as a notification for a ward, <clears throat> I'm going to have a very different response to that person. And I can respond with the mercy that God gave me. I can respond with the grace. Okay, you said that. Could I ask you why, why you said that? Why you think that? Can I understand? Because maybe there's something wrong in my life that I need to correct. It gives me an opportunity to build a bridge with that person when I respond that I'm blessed instead of let me show you who I am. The be attitudes. Remember, we're blessed. Secondly, the be visibles. Be the salt. Be the light. He didn't, say, he didn't just say act salty. How do you do that? You know? There's a difference between acting like a bulb and being a light, right? You know, as I get older, I get shaped more like a bulb, but that doesn't make me light, right? Be salt, be light. Be visible, let people see who we are, and then be different. Be different in our, in our anger, how we respond, how we deal with anger, to the lust that tempts us, to the promises that we make, to the patience that we need with other people and to the perfection that God has called us to be. How can we do that? Because of Christ that is in us. Ephesians 4, verse 13, and I'll, I'll close by reading this, this verse. Ephesians 4, 13. Let me start in verse 11. He gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Why? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry and for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, like Jesus Christ, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Pastor Dan, you don't know what this person says. You're right, I don't know. But I guarantee you, Jesus suffered more. And He opened not His mouth. He responded with mercy, with grace, generosity and so can I and so can you and it's not easy but when we really believe what Jesus said we will do what we believe we always do what we believe we always do what we really believe is what we do if I really believe that there's a reward in heaven that I'm blessed when people say evil things about me it won't discourage me. I might be disappointed for that person because I realize how miserable they must be. Because if you've been bitter against someone and you're saying those things against them, you know how you feel. And so I can have compassion on them. They must feel really bad to be saying those things. But I can rejoice. I can be perfect. Not because I and perfect in myself, but because God has made me a new creature which is perfected in Jesus Christ. Will you stand with me as we close this morning? I want us to consider this and I want us to
behind it as we think about it?